All right, gang. Um, so this is going to be another short unit this week, and this one is all about politics or um, government in Europe in the 19th century, early 19th century. And it's it plays a really vital role um, to us because it really plays into what happens in the early part of the 20th century leading up to World War I. So here what we're going to be talking about. You guys are going to take a look at political and philosophical movements in Europe in the 19th century. We're going to look at um, unsuccessful revolutions on the continent, and that's kind of what we'll do tomorrow night, and also what happens in Great Britain and how they avoided revolutions. We're going to look at the unification of Italy, and we're also going to look at the unification of Germany. Um, that comes later. And we're going to talk about how the French Revolution really was important in terms of creating a more modern Europe in terms of turning away from the church and the influence of the Pope uh, being very nationalistic or proud of their country, and also the, the expansion of democratic ideals. And we can really thank Napoleon for spreading all of those ideas uh, throughout all of Europe. And lastly, like I said, we're going to talk about the unification of Germany. So first things first, let's take a look at this map. Uh, Europe under Napoleon, uh, you see how he divided it. Remember, he organized Europe along cultural lines or along groups that had a similar language. And that was really dramatically different to what happened when Metternich took over in the age of Metternich and the Congress of Vienna um, and how they divided up Europe and how it really looked a lot different. So let's talk about what is often referred to 1815 to 1848 as the age of Metternich. This guy right here was the Austrian Secretary of State. Um, he was not the king of Austria. He was not the emperor of Austria, but he was the, the lead statesman or the lead politician in all of Europe that kind of orchestrated and ran things for all of Europe and kind of uh, set things going. Okay. Well, um, two important concepts we need to understand are two new political philosophies. One of these is called conservatism, and they, they are competing ideologies uh, that compete and work against one another. So the first one is conservatism. Um, conservatism is marked by an attempt to ensure tradition and stability um, in Europe and throughout the world. And anybody that is conservative, that, that's what they're trying to do. Is they're trying to ensure tradition and stability. Now, what that basically means in Europe in the 19th century is they want to go back to nobility, having all the say, the aristocracy having power, and they want to limit the rights and the freedoms of people. They had seen the violence of the French Revolution. They saw how the mob, as they were often called, could make bad decisions and do really bad things, and, and that made Europe very unstable. Um, on the other hand, you have what's called liberalism. Liberalism is essentially an idea that people should have lots of freedom, and the ability to change quickly. So freedom to change and do things, and also a guarantee of rights. Now, what kind of rights are we talking about? We're mostly talking about economic and political rights and economic and political freedom. Essentially, the idea that all people are equal, at least in terms of rights. Here, we're talking about um, white males in Europe, and sometimes white landowning males, um, that they should have a say in government and a stake in government. Um, but that's essentially what liberalism is. Uh, there's a second or a third philosophy rather called radicalism, which means that everybody is completely and totally equal, but we're really not concerned or going to talk much about that right now. So let's talk about conservative Europe. The age of Metternich is the era of a conservative Europe where the nobility comes back to power. So why did European monarchs and why did the European um, nobility choose conservatism? Why didn't they grant people rights? Well, here's the problem. One, um, it took power away from the aristocracy. Um, and the aristocracy, what we would call the nobility or kings, um, what they wanted to do was they wanted to maintain power and they wanted to maintain control. Well, they also saw the violence of liberalism um, under the French Revolution. The French Revolution during the Reign of Terror was very violent, was extremely violent, and they did not want to have that violence come back and affect their country because that led to a lot of instability. That obviously led to the monarchs not being in control. And that led to a lot of other negative consequences as they did not like that. And also geographically. Um, geographically speaking, they wanted to help maintain a balance of power. And what had happened under Napoleon was that they, the balance of power was completely and totally thrown off. And so <clears throat> they wanted to ensure that... Um, the geographic balance of power was maintained. Well, in practice, um, here's how conservatism worked. Essentially, it worked by limiting freedoms of people. Um, in Austria, uh, freedom of speech was greatly limited. In um, 
France, freedom of speech and freedom of the press was greatly limited, even under Napoleon. And so what that meant was even though people had become more equal uh, when Napoleon had put his people, his brother into power in the Confederation of the Rhine, those rights were removed from them. And so people no longer had those rights and those freedoms any longer. And that kind of made them unhappy, as you can imagine. Well, there were several challenges to Clemens von Metternich and his authority. Um, the primary challenge was liberalism. Um, the liberal ideas as seen by this guy right here named Giuseppe Massini. Giuseppe Massini uh, was an Italian, if you can't tell by his name, was an Italian who supported practices and the ideals of liberalism um, and wanted to give people more of a say. Um, essentially what liberalism meant was political and economic freedom. Again, people have a say in their government. People are free to do what they would like in terms of their economy and making money. And that's what liberalism was primarily about. Well, also coming along, um, liberalism was obviously appealing because it gave people uh, freedom and it gave people rights uh, to do what they wanted and to have a say in their own lives. Well, another political philosophy that challenged Metternich and this idea of organizing Europe based on these large empires was the idea of nationalism. Uh, nationalism is belief in your country. Okay, Nationalism is pride or uh, faith in your nation. And what often goes along with this is the idea of cultural unity. So let's think back to your geography classes and what is culture. Culture is a way of life of people. It's um, uniting. It, it's something that ties people together. It's a common language. It's a common uh, customs, uh, holidays, things like that. Religion often is tied with culture. Well, what cultural unity meant was that everyone who had the same culture or practiced the same cultural habits in a, in a place would be united together. And under Metternich and under the old um, empires, that did not happen, particularly in Germany or what becomes Germany and particularly in Italy and also in the Ottoman Empire um, in southeastern Europe. The Balkan Peninsula had a lot of different cultures, but they were all governed by someone and run by someone who was not part of their culture. Well, going along with cultural uh, unity was the idea of self-determination. Uh, Self-determination is the idea that every person or every group should be able to govern or rule themselves how they saw fit. And so every culture and every nation should be able to unite, create their own country, and determine for themselves the style and the government and how they should be ruled. Well, so um, the idea that I want you to get out of this is that liberalism and nationalism go hand in hand because they essentially say, hey, we want our own say in government. We want to be united with people who are like us. All right. And so in the age of Metternich, from 1815 to 1848, liberalism and nationalism are really tightly tied. They're really tightly united. And they both challenge conservative Europe. And they eventually, what you guys are going to talk about, what we're going to look at tomorrow, they eventually challenge and lead to several revolutions in the year of 18 and 48. But that's for tomorrow.